if you're not cut out to be a shield, there's always work for you in the stables. Unless, of course, you think you can defend your master while sat on your ass in a puddle of pig swill. I'm sure he'd find a way. My brother always looks after me. <laughs> right? Go on. You're sure to hit him eventually. Don't give up now. <laughs> Again, unfortunately, this episode is going to be loaded with absolute shit audio. And... <laughs> I'm going to do my best to cut it out, but you're going to hear some weird shit here and there. Apparently I was eating something while recording this too, so you hear crunches of potato chips or something. Anyway, we've jumped back 13 years, and Wyvern, being known as Clive back then, is being taught how to fight. And it's a tutorial, so you can apparently just skip over it, and that's what I did. Bested at last. It's taken me long enough. That was a display worthy of your father. You are a true shield of the flame, and let no one tell you otherwise, including me. What are you, Logoria? Back to your drills. Sure. I was just tired. The Phoenix's flames are a gift. I mustn't waste them. It isn't a waste. My shields look after me. Why shouldn't I? <coughs> That's why. You were coughing this morning, too. You shouldn't be outdoors. You'll be fine. It's just a cold. Don't push yourself. His grace has returned! Father's back! Hey. Your Grace, please, this is no place for one such as you. I would gladly brave hell itself to see my darling boy. Gentlemen, Rosaria thanks you for your indefatigable loyalty. Thank you, Your Grace. We live to serve. Joshua. You should not be out of doors. We have discussed this. I'm sorry. Good day to you, Mother. Come, Joshua. Your father will be expecting us. Lord Murdoch? Your Grace. What a way to treat your own flesh and blood. I know. It's not his fault. Not everyone can be born the Phoenix. We should join them.
Arise, my friends. Welcome home, Father. Thank you, Joshua. You are well, I trust. Yes, Father. Much better. Today, Jill and I went to the bay to watch Clive spar. Is that so? Quiet, Toggle. Stop it, boy. Not now. You'll make a fine hound one day. Father. Lift up your head, girl. Thank you, Your Grace. The capital rejoices at your safe return, Your Grace. War is coming, my boy. We must make ready. Is the situation truly so grave? Come to the throne room. We will talk there. Yes, Father. Your Grace. Hmm. Shields dismissed! You're going, hmm? Clive here is off to see the Archduke. Right. Rather interesting and possibly infuriating dynamic that Clive has with his parents. While his father, the, the Archduke, the guy who's running this kingdom, seems to respect and love him. His mother absolutely does not. Seems to resent him. And... Well, Joshua, the little brother, is the one that is the favorite. As it turns out, that is because his little brother is the one that was the dominant, meaning he was the one that would turn into Phoenix, and Clive is just not that, so his mother sees him as a failure. And that must suck. <laughs> it does seem, though, that despite the fact that Joshua is the one that has the potential for the greater power, he seems to be a sickly boy, and especially when he uses his powers, it takes something out of him, and he kind of, like, you see him coughing and stuff, and everyone's saying, like, you shouldn't have been outside, you're sick, and, you know, and the kid wants to see his brother sparring out here, so, you know. So we have Clive here, and he is quite a bit younger, and they say... They say he's uh, 15 at this part of the game, so I guess he's 28 in the... We're looking at a flashback here. He was 28 in the very beginning when we saw him being called Wyvern. He doesn't have the tattoo across his face. So, and apparently he's like a prince. <laughs> so, quite a way he's fallen in 13 years. So we have these two brothers, one of them is the favorite, we're playing as the not favorite, and there's this other girl here named Jill. Now I do think it's kind of interesting that, I guess they did really want to go all in on this sort of European setting, uh, but they've given everybody sort of, sort of standard European names, which isn't typical for the Final Fantasy series. You have people named like Cloud and Zedan and shit like that, we got a kid named Clive. Not the most common of names, but it is a name. You have a Joshua. You have a Jill. And that's uh, it's interesting. I guess it, it fits as long as they can stick with it throughout the game. I guess with different kingdoms you might see like a shift between the, the standard kinds of names, but we'll see. This character of Jill, I'm trying to figure her out. Apparently there is a sort of a, a codex that you can reference, but if you miss the point in which, like, when the character is present in the scene, you can't go back and access the information. So I don't really know what the deal with her is. She does reference at points being um, being a foreigner. So I figure a po few possibilities of what she could be. She could be, like, a foreign dignitary, like an ambassador or something like that. Although she looks kind of young for that, although she does sound older 
I mean, it is a JRPG, so she could be like 13 and still be a diplomat or something. But I doubt that. It's possible she's also like the daughter of a diplomat, but she does seem to be in this family or in a, to an extent in the good graces of these people. So either maybe she's like befriended them and they've sort of like accepted her into this uh, castle here or I figure she might be like a Theon Greyjoy kind of character in in a Song of Ice and Fire uh, Game of Thrones you had a character named Theon Greyjoy who was the son of the king of a different one of the kingdoms that was at war with the North and at the end of the war part of the sort of final negotiations for ending the war was the king's son is taken as kind of a a political hostage like if you if you rebel again we'll kill your son now that Theon wasn't mistreated or anything and I, I it just uh, I'm talking about freaking Game of Thrones here she might have been something like that she might have been a the daughter of a dignitary or though you're not you're not seeing her parents though but whatever and we got dog Torgal, the little dog. <laughs> Guess we're going to see this later. I want to make something clear up front. Um, it's pretty common in the lead up to these Final Fantasy games where the developers will go and release little bits of details about the story. Mostly not about the plot so much, but like the names of the characters, as well as some details about the settings and the backdrop and like what war is going on between this and that whatever that kind of stuff I've ignored all of that because I wanted to well I mean I wasn't the most interested in this game going into it but I also if I did play it I wanted to have like a complete like fresh experience with it which doesn't always work because I, I tend to do that with all of these Final Fantasy games and like with 13 it left me completely fucking baffled as to what the hell was going on in the beginning same thing with 12 no idea what the fuck was going on because there's so many different names and all that shit and shout out that I just couldn't keep track of it and they didn't know what the fuck they were talking about when they saying, "Oh, this place has fallen." I'm like, okay, where is where is that? Where the fuck is Nabudis? I don't know. What what does that relate to you? Who are you, by the way? I don't know. All of that shit. Maybe I would have understood that stuff had I paid attention to the pre-release hype and all that kind of stuff. So, I don't really know much at all about this game. The only thing I really knew was that it had a European setting. And the main character's name was Clive. So, I, none of these other characters I know jack all shit about. I didn't know Joshua was a character. I didn't know Jill was a character. I didn't know the... What the hell was the Duke's name? I, whatever. I still don't know what his name is. <laughs> and I also heard that it was sort of not... A sort of semi ish open world game where it sort of like um, the way Final Fantasy 12 did it where it's not a true open world game but it drops you into these environments that you can explore around in there is a photo mode which is awesome <laughs> I think lots of games especially like these cinematic games really should have photo modes in them because it's just an it probably doesn't require enormous amount of time to implement especially if it's going to be a sort of a standard one that doesn't like repose characters like Horizon Zero Dawn does but it, it is an extra little thing and it can create awesome screenshots and I'm going to eventually have to start huh. oh these are the missions we're on we're still on the mission that's in the future it really makes some cool screenshots I'm going to have to get in on that rolling around in the menus just trying to explore around what's going on here so far though i haven't seen a whole hell of a lot hell of a lot about clive's actual personality he didn't display much emotion or anything like that during the initial scene that we had seen with him in the future and so far he's just sort of come across as a kind of a a loyal soldier. He's someone who understands that he's not going to be his parents' favorite and he's not going to become king. He's not, 
they have lower aspirations for him. So he sort of resigned in himself to being a knight in some way, just to protect his brother. Oh, the fucking rings. I did not realize this initially. I I learned about this um, after I finished playing the demo. But apparently, um, these items that it gives you is sort of the way the game has for implementing an easy mode. So instead of giving you an option in a menu or something like that, or whatever, it allows you to, at any point or during the game, switch in and out these different pieces of equipment in order to make combat easier. So what I'd put on there made it so the various combos and abilities that Clive would use just sort of get strung together by tapping the square button. And that is definitely not the way you should be playing this game. The combat, the combat is pretty awesome, apparently. And I didn't see that because it just felt so damn easy. And looking at these characters here, this interesting sort of art style that they've chosen to go with. Because the environment looks incredible, but the characters actually, like, aren't tremendously detailed. They're sort of stylized with a sort of not quite realistic look to them, and I have a feeling that this was intentional. But it does kind of make it look a little bit strange, and there was a lot of criticism thrown at the game prior to release for this. Pray do not concern yourself with this bungling car. Bow to him, you fool. Uh, 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 I say to speak. It was no trouble, really. Oh, do not indulge him. To be allowed to stand in your lordship's presence is more than his kind deserves. Why, neither the Empire nor the Republic treat their bearers half so well. He was lucky to be born in your father's dominion. Very lucky, as I remind him every day. Stand. Please. Stop it! Hey! Stand. I trust his good fortune will continue. Of course, if that is your lordship's wish. Don't work too hard. Remember, it is for the good of the duchy that you serve. As do we all, my lord. As do we all. Come along now. Back to your duties. Again, sorry for that terrible audio, though. Uh, there. <laughs> what um, uh, uh, what I was yelling at was my freaking cat was jumping around on top of things. The cat tried jumping on top of my PlayStation, and you know that the PlayStation 5 is not the most stable thing sitting on a table, and a cat jumping on top of it could knock the fucking thing over. So we saw something interesting there. We had this guy with a tattoo on his face, similar to what Clive has. And it certainly seems that the tattoos are kind of a mark of slavery. So the kingdom that we're in, Rosaria, has slaves. And it seems like it might be a common thing in this world, because uh, Clive is a slave later on. They call them bearers. And bearers seem to have magical ability. So this guy's using magic to sort of fill this fountain up. And they, they talk about how magic crystals are used. But like they're using this guy instead of a crystal too. I'd even call him a slave master. Look at that. So it makes me wonder what the hell. Um, well I guess I know by now. But what the hell would have happened to um, make Clive go from essentially being... 
a prince, a prince that'll never be king, but a prince of Rosaria to being a slave in a completely different kingdom, but an empire. Hmm, things really went downhill for him. But he does display uh, magical ability. He can cast fire and all that kind of stuff. And it seems like the people who have the ability to cast magic are slaves. And the people who um, can't cast magic are the ones that enslave them. Which is kind of like the opposite of maybe the way you'd think it would go down. I guess maybe the people who can cast magic are an enormous minority, a significant minority, and they just, the magical ability doesn't offset the numbers difference, you know? But then you have, but it's kind of weird because you have these enslaved bearers with their ability to cast magic and they are slaves. But you have the dominants who are significantly more powerful but probably significantly fewer. And during that um, during that meeting that we saw in the first episode, they were talked about as though, like, oh, there's a dominant, and you have a dominant. So there can't be many of them. But their power seems to be so enormous that they sort of offset that difference. And you see, like, Joshua, who's going to be king of this country because he's the dominant of Phoenix. You have that giant fucker who's the dominant of Titan, you have, um, well, I, I don't know. Those are the two. Shiva. It's all Shiva, but we don't know anything about her yet. Um, but the, the, So the bearers are slaves, but the dominants seem to land themselves in sort of like uh, politically powerful positions. That guy, that big bastard, wasn't a king or anything like that, but he seemed to have been in a position of power where he could just outright disrespect the other people that were in that meeting and not suffer any repercussions or anything like that. So he's definitely not a slave. Joshua is definitely not a slave. So there's a big difference between the dominance and the bearers. Look at this uh, animation that they have here. I mean, it's impressive that they can contort the character like that, this like procedural uh, inverse kinematics technology that they have for these games nowadays is really impressive. And it was impressive for Final Fantasy XV as well. But it does look unnatural. Like, why would anyone stand like that? Here's another bearer doing some uh, lawn and garden shit. <laughs> Should have him working at the Home Depot. You don't see many of these people. I guess we've seen three so far. Um... So I guess they really are in a significant minority. Clive, though, to his credit, despite the fact that these people are slaves, doesn't appear to mistreat them, doesn't make enslaving them right, but he's at least he's not abusive to them. <laughs> That's a fluffy puppy. More like a wolf than a dog, I guess. I guess there are limits to how far Jill can go. She doesn't go into this room with him. You commanded my presence, Your Grace. How may I serve you? All right, you can stop licking my boots. Mother isn't here. Do the territories fare any better? Most lie under a pall of black. In just these few moons, the blight has taken nigh on all of the northern reaches. It is only a matter of time before it crosses the border. By the flames. Nearly every available bed in the capital is already occupied by those fleeing the deadlands. Even if we were to send them south to Port Isolde, more would only follow in their wake. Every day we delay brings us closer to disaster. We must move now. Against the Iron Kingdom. We have traded blows with them for too long. 
It is time to end it. At the very least, we must secure Drake's breath. Without the blessing of the Mother Crystal, we cannot defend our realm from the spread of the Blight. The Iron Blood will not relinquish it easily. This will be a bitter fight. We ride for Phoenix Gate tomorrow. There we will listen to the words of our ancestors, as tradition dictates. Am I to go with you as Joshua's shield? There is something else I would have you do first. Rodney. You will have heard the reports, I am sure, of beastmen from the north being sighted within our borders. Goblins in the Stillwind Marshes. I know of the rumors, yes. Then you know what must be done. I will give you two good men. While we ride north tomorrow, you will journey to Stillwind, search it, and clear it. Then you will join us at Phoenix Gate. It is time to prove your strength. And shut your mother up for good. Hmm? <clears throat> I will do my duty, Your Grace. That will be all. Rest well. We ride at dawn. Yes, Your Grace. There's something called oh this active time lore. That's how you get at the the codex of this game, so you can get some better understanding of what's going on. But unfortunately, it doesn't let you go back and see stuff that may have passed in the moment. So like I can't go back and look up Joshua. I can't go back and look up Jill. I can't go whatever. I'll have to figure this out later on. They make reference to something called the blight. So there's a war going on, and um, Joshua, Joshua's father, um, Clive's father as well, is sending him on a mission. They're gonna go. They're gonna go and sort of pray at a sort of like a Oracle of Delphi kind of situation, and they need to bring Joshua along because he's the dominant of Phoenix. It's like important that he be there for some reason. Uh, Clive is being sent to investigate some monsters or something, so clearly the father respects him enough to trust him with things, and it tells him, like, meet up with us later when we're at that gate. Um, some references are made to something called the Blight, but I don't have any real detail as to what the hell that is yet. Now, Blight usually refers to some kind of a disease, but in, like, like Dragon Age, the Blight is a reference to both an invading army and an invading army of monsters and a kind of disease which spreads across the land. So, um, I guess maybe that's what we are looking at here, a sort of a disease that spreads across the land. And there's talk about um, people fleeing the Blight. So I guess maybe it could be sort of like... Um, a crop thing, like a disease that spreads across crops and kills them off, and people have to leave a land that they can't grow their food in, and that results in a lot of refugees heading to Rosaria. Now, the king is sort of... Uh, the king, he's not a king, he's the, the archduke. I guess there's a difference there. I don't give a rat's ass about uh, royalty there. Hereditary monarchies are fucking stupid, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, I said it, British. Come fight me. Uh, Iron Blood Savages. Now, the Iron Blood were people that we saw in that battle during the opening scenes that when Clive was older. Apparently, the Rosaria, Rosaria is at war with the Iron Blood as well. So I'm, I'm having a hard time piecing it together, but it seems like Titan was with 
I don't know who the hell they were, what country or kingdom that was, but the Iron Blood were the ones that had Shiva. So the Iron Blood had Shiva. We are at war with them. So they have they have their dominant, which is ice. And since Joshua is the Phoenix dominant, the dominant of uh, the element of Rosaria is fire. So they're obviously they're going to be opposed. Just that symbolism is always going to be there. And he's got a nice bedroom, despite not being his mother's favorite. <laughs> Cinematics until the end of the episode. I have nothing left to say here. How long will you be away this time? Not long. Four days. Maybe five. And you will be taking Joshua? Well, I can't exactly leave him behind, can I? The blood of the Rosfields runs in his veins. Before going to war, we perform the rite at Phoenix Gate. It's our way. You know that. And only the Dominant can enter the apothecary. So yes, I'm taking Joshua. Oh, to hell with your way! The boy is ill. You think I don't know that? But the boy is also the phoenix. The heir to the throne. You can't keep him in swaddling clothes all of his life. Elwyn! Don't worry. Clyde will watch over him. Though he is a youth of but 15 years, he's already a fine soldier. He will make a splendid shield. You see more in him than the Phoenix did. He was rejected, Elwyn. Our household has no place for such a failure. He is worthless, a man like any other. As am I, my dear. <laughs> Nonsense. You are the Archduke of Rosaria. Oh, not this again. You know as well as I do that I only sit upon the throne because my father was taken before his time. I am merely warming the seat till Joshua comes of age. You are your father's firstborn son, and you sit upon the throne. All is in its right place. Unlike some, you have not disgraced our noble blood. Without men like Clive to keep us safe, your precious noble blood would long since have graced the gutter. We have an early start. I'm going to sleep. I want you. This is it then. Time to prove yourself. Wishing on a star? I'm a little old for that. I should get some sleep. Right. You're going with them tomorrow, aren't you? I am Joshua's shield. I'm sworn to protect him. He takes too many risks. I only wish I could save him from himself. Clive, you... I have another mission too. Father has given me my first command. Well, if you're not going to pray to Metia for your safe return, I shall just have to do it for you. There's going to be another war, isn't there? 
Since coming here, I've begun to take peace for granted. I assumed the war between our nations would be the last. But it never really ends, does it? No. The next war will be bigger than before. But you'll be alright, won't you, Clive? You're a shield of Rosaria, after all, and blessed by the Phoenix. It's getting cold. We should go in. My lady. <laughs> Good night, Clive. Sorry, Ambrosia. I won't be hunting today. Don't worry. I'm sure you'll do brilliantly. Mm, I'll try. <laughs> for Phoenix Gate. May the blessing of the crystals go with us and shield the fabulous flame forever! As Grace departs, open the gates. Rossfield, allow me. I shall see her safely to Phoenix Gate. Thank you. We're ready to depart, my lord. May I say what an honor it is to serve alongside you? be no mere investigation. If there are goblins in Stillwind, they won't leave willingly. The beastmen are a fierce foe. We underestimate them at our peril. Not today we won't. Sir Wade, Sir Tyler, let us do our duty. With pleasure, my lord. As you command. To the marshes, then. Just want to add something here before the episode ends, that there is a bit of an interesting dynamic um, between Clive and Jill. Now, obviously, she's going to be something of a love interest later on in the game, but it's definitely the case that she is not from Rosaria, and she is probably of uh, from these Iron Blood people, and maybe the she is a sort of a political hostage from there but it seems like she's spent so much time with them that she cares a lot over for these people especially Clive and thinking that he is going to go off somewhere and put himself at risk that he might end up dying and so she's afraid of that so she's praying for him and she's crying over that and all that kind of stuff but he is not um he's hesitant to sort of uh, comfort her in that moment there. 
And it also seems like this war that's going on between their different kingdoms has been going on for a long time. And um, Rosaria is hoping to do what, whatever they're planning on doing the next day. They're hoping that what they do can end the war. Not necessarily through like a peace or anything like that, but through an invasion. And it's interesting that even though Jill seems like she is in iron blood herself, she and these people are going to fight her own people, she seems to be more emotionally attached to Clive and those people than she is to her own people. I could be wrong about that, though. It seems like she seems like she's an iron blood. She might be from somewhere else. I don't fucking know. I'll figure it out later. 